Hey guys, tonight we're going to do some really simple and delicious New York strips on cast iron on the Weber. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Todd. This is Greenhorn Barbecue and Beer. Glad you can stop by. We really appreciate it when you come by and spend a few moments of your day checking out a few of our videos. So like we said, tonight we're gonna make some delicious New York steaks. Uh, we're gonna cook them up a little bit different than what we're used to. So tonight, instead of going directly over some coals uh, or over the grill grates to get some grill marks, we're gonna go with some cast iron and we're just gonna go for that crust, the kind of crust you get when you don't burn the steak. Burning the strip in with those grill marks, definitely aesthetically appealing, but not always very tasty. So we're gonna try to achieve a nice even crust and not grill marks on that steak. A couple nice looking uh, choice New York strip steaks uh, or New York steaks. No, so even though they're choice, I think it's a higher grade of choice. It's got some really nice marbling through here. We really like it a lot. So the first thing we're gonna do, besides having a beverage, we're gonna take some of this avocado oil and rub these babies down. And uh, why avocado, you ask? Well, it's not to season it. It's not to help the seasoning stick any better, although it does help a little bit. This is really about lubrication and helping protect that steak. Avocado has one of the highest smoke points for oils. And if you get the processed avocado oil, believe it or not, you're gonna get upwards of 540 degrees smoke point. Um, that, that's pretty high guys. So um, check out the charts. I'll drop one if uh, I remember. For seasoning, we're gonna keep it really simple. All right, salt, pepper, and granulated garlic. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of salt. Now this is kosher salt, a little coarser than uh, other kinds of salt. That's what you want. Now if these were much thicker, I'd probably pile on a little bit more of this. Um, but you know, they're not, they're not super thick. Uh, this one is probably a little bit thicker. Um, and that should be probably pretty good right there. And I'm going to go for a little bit of black pepper, coarse ground black pepper. Okay. Now, since these are New York, not a ribeye, probably going to rely on the seasoning a little bit more than usual. And then just for, you know what, and giggles, a little bit of granulated garlic, just a little bit, just enough to know you, let you know it's there. And uh, since these are thin enough, I'm not going to bother doing the sides. I'm going to pat it in a little bit. Again, sorry to reach across the front again. A little more salt. There we go. A little pepper. All right. And of course, a little bit of granulated garlic. It's a little windy out here, but it's okay. I'll go downwind. Again, just enough to know it's there. All right, these look really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the grill ready. Since I'm outside, I'm gonna cover these up. All right, guys. So I'm using just any old charcoal because remember, uh, we're putting this in a cast iron skillet. I'm not relying on any of that charcoal smoke or anything for any of the flavor, really. Just heat, so any old charcoal we'll use with this method. So let's go ahead and get this grill going. Okay, no fancy slow motion today, guys. I'm too hungry. So, as you can tell, using the old smoke and sear, slow and sear, uh, you know, this little offset basket here. Uh, you know, if you don't have the Weber ones, uh, that's cool. You know, just pile up your charcoal off over to the side. You get the same effect. So, I'll go ahead. And Put that grill in there. That coal is ready to go. So the first thing we want to do is heat up our pan. All right, guys, there's a couple ways you can tell when this cast iron is up to temperature. One, 
is with trusty little digital thermometer. Um, depending on where I'm pointing this, it's already getting over over 500 degrees in some places. 520, 550. Yeah, that's that's what I want to see. 550, pretty much everywhere. So that's my target. But that's one way. Next way is a little water droplets. And your water droplets do that. It's hot enough. So those are two ways. All right. Now here's where that avocado pays itself off. Hear that? There we go. And we wait about a minute and a half to two minutes per side. All right, guys, one thing is for sure. The smell is amazing, let me tell you. I can smell that garlic, the avocado oil with the all those juices. Okay, it's been a minute and a half. Let's take a look. Okay, let's see how it releases itself. Oh, look at that. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh my God, look at that. Have you seen a more beautiful thing? That nice crust there. Not really super even, you know, but that's okay. But I want that crust, that's what we're going for. And we count another minute and a half. Okay, it's been a minute and a half on that side. And there we go. Okay, you see how I pulled it off to the side? All right, guys, at this point, we're just using the Weber now as an outdoor oven. Basically, that's what it is, right? We've offset the skillet to the indirect side, just like we would if we were smoking some meat, except I got the same amount of charcoal up there. So I'm closing down the exhaust to choke it off a little bit and bring it to right about 350, 375, and I'm gonna hold it there until it's done. I'm looking for about 128 to 130, and then we're gonna let it rest. Okay, so all we gotta do now is wait for that to come up to an internal temperature of about 128 to 130. How am I gonna know that? Right here. Go get yourself a very high quality, reliable instant read thermometer. This happens to be a thermopen. It's beautiful, it's got an adaptive display, it even lights up with a sensor when it's too dark. Um, it lasts forever, and I could also use this probe to judge tenderness. And of course, I'll leave a description down in the link farm down below so you can go check it out. All right, guys, let's take a look at them steaks. Here we go. I'm gonna take a look at this one here first. All right, look at that crust. Isn't that beautiful? That's exactly what I was looking for. Sassy likes hers a little bit more medium to medium well, and that's okay, I like it like that too. Um, and um, we're just going to go ahead and cut right down in the middle. There we go. Oh yeah, not bad. I'll screw these tongs and we'll pick it up. Not bad, I'd say, not bad, not bad at all. Now, let me get a little piece off the edge here. There we go. Alright guys. Mmm. Oh. Mm. I'm a firm believer in different pieces of steaks taste differently. Ribeye being one of the best. But you know, this New York done this way. Oh my God, that crust, it's not burned. It's a legitimate crust. Mm. With that salt and pepper, just a hint of garlic and avocado oil to protect it. Mm. 
tastes so good. So we have a special guest tonight. Yeah. She's my better, she's the other half of Greenhorn Barbecue Beer. What? Okay, baby, look at that crust. Oh, that looks nice, honey. Is that how you like it? Mm-hmm. Okay, a little bit of fat, I'm gonna get you this little piece right here. This is the New York? Yep. Oh. Alright guys, we knocked it out of the park in this one. I know I said that a lot. This time we did, for sure. Mm. Right, you guys, hey, if you're into t-shirts, we got merch on sale right now through 4th of July weekend. Our prices are down in the basement. I mean, Teespring's probably going to fire me after they find out what I did in the prices. So go on over to our Teespring store. You go check it out. Got some cool shirts there with our new logo, Suds McBacon. You're gonna dig the little critter. He's on all our shirts now. So, uh, babe, is it time to eat dinner? It's time to eat dinner. We're kicking you guys out. Peace out. See you later.